CataractCoach.com. A talented registrar performs FACO. This young doctor from the UK is bringing very high-level skills to surgery. This is a nice case to watch. So I'm going to show you the whole case unedited, only about eight minutes. Now here's the main incision being made. Now the video is a little bit out of focus because these young surgeons have such great accommodation. I'm jealous. So let's give some feedback here. That incision's pretty good. Um, looks like it could have started a little bit closer to the limbo vessels. Again, you know, I like to nick those limbo vessels. So here, the first incision is being made, the main incision, then an anesthetic place. Now this is probably our viscoelastic. So what's interesting was that the main incision was placed in an eye without viscoelastic, just with uh, the normal aqueous. And that certainly requires a little bit of skill because the eye can collapse. And now here's the paracentesis. Now you can make these incisions in any order. You know, when you see me do it, I do the paracentesis first and then put the lidocaine, then put the uh, viscoelastic, but it doesn't really make a difference. So here using a cystome to start the rexus and flipping over that edge, it looks pretty good. Oh, it looks like that uh, cystome was on the viscoelastic cano, so that's helpful. Here are some forceps similar to mine where they're marked off at two and a half presumably in five millimeters. So let's see the pivoting technique. Very nice, good pivoting. And this young surgeon is sitting superiorly. So this looks like uh, probably a right eye and sitting superiorly. Rexus looks good, good pivoting in the incision. So grabbing the capsule and good pivoting, keeping that up. And again, making a good appropriately sized rexus. So it should be right on the nose, about five to five and a half millimeters. That looks great. So again, getting that technique down, that's really good. Now you may have a little bit of trouble there superiorly or subincisionally getting out some of that cortex because the rexus there's a little smaller, but it looks great. Here's the hydrodissection. Notice how much viscoelastic is lost with hydrodissection. This happens to all surgeons, all cases, all eyes. This is why, in general, I like to put a little more, a little aliquot of uh, dispersive viscoelastic against the central corneal epithelium prior to doing phaco. Now, don't do a mega fill because that can predispose you to having a phaco wound burn if you're uh, stopping fluid flow throughout the anterior segment. All right, here comes the phaco probe. Let's see the technique. Now I'm watching this video for the first time with you. This young doctor, she sent me this video and asked if I could do a review for her and give her some pointers, so let's do that. So there's the, uh, in, the phaco probe, looks like a central groove is being made. And right in the middle, the groove looks really quite good. Starting sub-incisionally, a little deeper in the, in the center and shallower in the periphery. That's pretty good depth already, maybe just a little right there in the center. I wouldn't do too much more than that. And that's another nice technique. You can go there under the rexus as well if you want to help um, propagate this crack. Now putting in some sort of uh, second instrument here, like a ball-tipped instrument, and splitting the nucleus. That's a good split, good positioning. And now, okay, a divide and conquer technique. So rotating it here now 90 degrees and now doing the other part of this groove here to use divide and conquer. Again, divide and conquer is a great technique. It certainly works. And it's something that uh, most of our res residents, and I'm sure these registrars in the UK, start off by doing. So now it looks like all four quadrants are gonna be made and split prior to removing anything else. And so there's back to the original groove. May need a little bit more energy. And then now rotating it one last time to make the final groove. And so this is a very typical divide and conquer. And again, you just need to have enough of a groove here to place the two instruments, the, the chopper or that ball tip instrument and the phaco tip inside and get a good split. And that looks pretty good. So now moving to the high vacuum, high flow to bring the pieces up out of the bag. So quadrant removal and they come down pretty easily. That looks great, and here's the second one. Notice how the eye stays in primary the whole case. I like that, that's really a great job. Also notice how the draping is good. There are no eyelashes in the field, I like that as well. And now finally removing the nuclear pieces. So I showed you the whole video here unedited, again about eight minutes, which for a doctor in training for a young registrar, she is doing an amazing job. I would uh, now focus on just perfecting your technique, just the little things. Work on that incision a little bit more. The Rex is good, but I bet you could make it great. 
you're obviously a very talented young doctor with great hands and obviously you have the drive and determination to become better and better because that's why you sent the video in. You really care. So now that's looking like HPMC, hydroxypropylmethacellulose on the corneal surface. And that's a, a um, IA probe going inside the eye now, coaxial to remove the cortex. And this bent tip can help, especially to access that subincisional area. So let's see how that goes. Because remember, that was the one area where the rexus was a little on the smaller side, but should be okay. So at this point, great job. Keep up the good work. So I think it's definitely time for you to transition to other techniques. Stop and chop, and then eventually just straight chop or quick chop. And then also just uh, hone the small details. Perfect the little skills. I'd even encourage you to slow it down a little bit. Go a little bit slower. You're very efficient. You're getting things done. But uh, if you spend an extra one or two minutes and really try to perfect your technique, make the incision as perfect as you can and that rex as perfect as you can, I think you'd, uh, you'd enjoy the surgery more. And then remember that rexus and your incision are part of the signature that you leave on that eye forever. So cleaning up, yeah, so we thought, we, we thought it would be a little tougher to get that sub-incision, and of course it is a little bit tougher because the rexus there is a little bit farther away from the pupil margin, but it's coming out nicely. Again, this bent tip helps to access that area. A little bit tougher if it was just a straight tip, and that's cleaned up pretty nicely. I like it. And so usually for doctors in training for this registrar, I'm guessing we're going to get a single piece acrylic lens in the bag. So filling up the capsule bag there nicely with the viscoelastic. And then we're going to insert the lens. In our program, I have our residents load their own lenses. I don't let the scrub tech do it for most of them because it's an important skill that you have to learn. So there comes the lens going inside the eye. Yep, single piece acrylic lens. Looks pretty good, unfolding nicely. And getting that positioned here. Looks like a Sinsky hook. And make sure that opens up beautifully in the capsule or bag. So taking out the viscoelastics, the last step. Yeah, you can see that incision. It's a little too avascular for my flavor. I'd, I'd prefer to hit those limbo vessels just a little bit. It'll be better long-term sealing for the patient. Now, I don't want chemosis. I don't want to cut the conjunctiva. But if you barely nick those limbo vessels, I think you'll agree it'll be a lot nicer long-term sealing. So that lens is definitely in the bag. That looks great. Again, you can see the difference in the rexes that we talked about earlier. A little bit small in the rexes in the superior part. And now let's hydrate and seal up these incisions. Let's see what we get here. So I encourage you to, a little less hydration than that. That's a little bit generous on the hydration. Learn, see my video about hydration. I think you'd be better off if you did more of the roof hydration instead of aiming towards these walls. And these huge white hydrated areas in the cornea are going to induce some temporary astigmatism in the patient. May not have the best vision on post-op day one because of that. So I'd encourage you to, to do a different technique. See how close to the visual axis that hydration is. So maybe don't use this technique in the future. The air bubbles, I don't mind. That, that could be your scrub tag giving you a syringe with air bubbles, and those will absorb in just a couple hours. So thanks for sending the video in. You really are doing a great job, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.